You know that really excited feeling that you get when you're about to embark on your holidays? That's what I'm feeling right now. And that's because I'm about to embark on a five day road trip and I'm heading south. So let me just explain a little bit about this road trip. I've got a five day clear window before I then have to venture north again up to Glencoe to run a workshop. So I'm gonna set myself a bit of a challenge. I'm going down south. Over a five day period, I want to try my best to create four separate vlogs, but all based around the theme of fine art. And my first destination, I'm gonna head there tonight and then hopefully create my first video tomorrow. My first destination is going to be Pin Mill. One of the best fine art images I think I've ever taken was at Pin Mill. And so I'm gonna set myself a bit of a challenge. For video number one, I'm going back to the same location to see if I can create another fine art image. And hopefully I'm going to create a fine art image that nobody else has created before. Oh, I'm so excited. I am, I'm just, like I said earlier, you know that feeling you get on day one of you heading off on your holidays, knowing that you've got a whole holiday ahead of you to look forward to. Well, that is exactly how I feel about my road trips. I have a theory. If you're good at post-production, then you'll learn to see differently in the field. I've said this several times. Don't be fooled by what I'm about to show you. Just keep watching. Proof, as they say, is in the pudding. I met up with Jack and we set about looking for composition ideas. That's exactly quite nice there. Difficult to try and get your head around my thought process with that. But if you imagine the tide half and half so that you can only see the zigzag posts, that has potential. Again, you've got to imagine this with the tied high enough to cover all those grasses. What you found, Jack? Ooh, look at this. What do you reckon? You reckon the tide comes up here? This is all that soggy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it does look as if the tide comes up. There's a bit of a shelf there, isn't it? But this, this fish must feel very wet and dumb. Yeah, you'd have to get really low down. Ooh, I tell you what, there's a bit of potential in that. What do you reckon about that, Jack? That's interesting, isn't it? It's clean. Yeah. That's quite nice. That has a lot of potential. That anchor. Yeah. That is really, really nice. And I've got to be honest, I didn't notice it, but out there, Jack just pointed out there's a post, a really, really old looking post. That there is probably, that's probably the best thing we've seen so far. So, very busy in the background. Again, you're gonna to have to get out as far as you dare go and that is really boggy. Get down nice and low to raise that post above the trees in the background just to make your post-production work a little bit easier or as easy as possible. A lot of clutter in the background, but that's, that's, that's irrelevant really. Ooh, we've just walked a mile up there and the best point of interest is that sign. Yeah, so I'm just having a discussion with Jack now and we're discussing about whether we can, we're going to try and walk further out there now so I could quite literally, yikes, 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 come this far out, get low, low down and put that sign up in that sky. Makes it a bit awkward with all the rubbish in the background, but I can't go further to the right and I can't go further to the left because... That is really nasty stuff to stand in. Plus, you have to remember, I've got to put my tripod there as well. This is fantastic, that blue one there. Yeah. Right, so what I mentioned earlier on in the video about learning to see things differently, 
I wonder how many people would actually walk past that boat there without giving it any credit at all for photography. And yet, from back here, look, Jack's already ahead of me. He's already ahead of me doing his research. Jumping in here. Look at that. Yeah, that has so much potential. Again, water high enough to cover the boat and cover the grass, but without making that boat float, assuming, again, that boat actually does float. That has a lot of potential. So we're just speaking to a guy who I'm guessing works here and he believes that boat floats. So that adds another element um, which might, well, it's just going to prove to be awkward now because once again, the water's going to be high enough to be around the boat, high enough to cover the grass, but not as not too high to make the boat float. Mm. Right, so I want to photograph the signage, the round signage in the water as a first shot. But <laughs> honestly, we're two hours off high tide and the water is already up way higher than I would have liked because I wanted to go out closer to the post, get a lower perspective and get that post up in the sky. And now that's going to prove to be quite a challenge. It's going to be quite difficult. Oh. oh my lord, look at that. I wanted to go all the way out there, now I can't go out. I am literally grabbing this by the skin of my teeth. That's up to the top of my wellies. Two minute exposure, I've got time quite literally for one picture, do or die, this is it. Oh, it's up the top of my wellies and <laughs> all the way up to the tripod head. Ooh. Oh no. <laughs> Got to invest in some waders. <laughs> Yikes. Why is it always the case we were here about four or five hours before high tide and now we find ourselves rushing. <laughs> it's just, just typical. So one chance out where I wanted to go to get a nice low perspective to get that sign up into the sky. I've got one shot in the bag. So that's either gonna work or not work. difficult image because by the time we've already got here the tide's already in enough for that boat to float so what I'm gonna have to do now is take a sped up shot to freeze the boat and then take a longer exposed shot to turn the sea into an ice skating rink and then I'll remove everything from the scene put you guys in camera so you can see what I mean so placing the boat here on the left hand side, I'm going to wait till we get a nicer 45 degree angle with that boat. All of this will all disappear. <laughs> so I'm going to take a sped up shot now to freeze the boat. And then I'm going to wait a little bit longer until the tide comes in just so we can get hopefully a clearer reflection of the boat underneath. And then I'll take a, a longer exposure and combine them in post production.
heading back to the car to grab something to eat because it's lunchtime and I'm bloody starving. We notice the tide's high enough to, to have covered this sign saying no parking, which I think it looks quite interesting. Combine that with the bench that's completely under the water and these posts and the fence down here, I think has a lot of potential. Problem with that, of course, is there's an awful lot in the background to get rid of. So the only other option is to zoom in and maybe take like a square crop around that sign or a, certainly a tighter crop anyway. But either way, there's an awful lot of work. But what I've decided to do is grab the picture, get it in the bag, and then I'll decide later if it's worthwhile me putting all that effort in in post-production. I like that though, it's nice. Right, so that lot right, find out the side. Yeah, it is interesting, isn't it? Very interesting. You'd have to lose that. Yeah, you'd have to lose a lot, that wouldn't you? a lot to get rid of, isn't it? Have a look. I quite, I quite like that angle with the bench coming in there and all that. So that, that's, yeah. that's come over there to get that in the space there. So all this coming in mm -hmm. a bit wider there, railings coming in, that all sits nice and just get rid of all of that. Yeah, all that lot, yeah. 